So the, the thing, like, if you're, if you're in, is that in? Or am I sort of? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. It's okay. Yeah. Okay. So. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so if you're, um, yeah, if you're going into work, there's lots of things you can do in the work situation. If you're getting like fears or pains or things coming up, you can sit with the feelings. Uh, and just feel those out, that's good. But some of the work you can do in work with all the dynamics that are going on is doing transcendence work. So, <clears throat> so there'll be dynamics with the boss, with colleagues, and possibly resentments or fears going on. So you, you work to transcend, transcend it, to fully release any emotions by sitting with the feelings. Uh, you, can, you can practice being the... Um, before you go in, you can think of your boss or your colleagues and just be the observer. And just practice when you're at work, whenever you can, just being the observer of yourself and the, your work colleagues or your boss. And then you suddenly realize that there's a detached observation that can go on. Eventually you'll realize that you'll be able to do, especially in the beginning, like repetitive jobs, you'll be able to do in the observer state. If you're doing something repetitive, Eventually, if you practice, like, if I'm, you know, I don't know, what's it, even like, even computer jobs which are repetitive can be done in the observer state, mm -hmm. you know, eventually that something's observing and then the body and, and everything will just carry on doing it over and over again. If there's a bit of something new, maybe the ego can be, can do it for a little while, but then you can flip back into the observer. Mm -hmm. If, um, <clears throat> another thing to do is if certain people really trigger you, like every time your boss comes in, like when I was in the stock market, my boss, I didn't, I didn't have these tools when I used to work in the stock market. But every time the boss would come over, I'd be in fear. He used to go around saying to people that he'll fire them, you see. So I had this fear mm. of every time he'd come near my table. <laughs> I don't know why. I don't know why I'd go around and say I'm going to fire him. So every time I'd come near, I'd get this fear come up. You know, so you, God, God bless him. <laughs> and... Um, but uh, I, re I remember now I know that, you know, it's a great opportunity, if you know someone's coming, is to ask what's observing. Mm -hmm. And I've had this with situations when I've done it. When you're in a charge situation, if you go to the observer, it can collapse the fear in a split second because you realise there's an observer of you and the situation and there's an observer of the fear and it collapses it very, very quickly. Um, the other thing you can do is just do the Course in Miracles on it, um, you know, um, God is a loving which I forgive my boss, my colleagues, or pray for a miracle to see the situation differently. Mm. Another thing to, to bear in mind is hapanapana. Mm -hmm. I think hapanapana. I think, uh, you know, if you're in a work situation, you may have certain patterns. Maybe some people seem to be victimizing you, gossiping about you, attacking you, various things with certain dynamics, with certain situations. So I think something like hapanapana, or cancelling of beliefs, or God did not create it so it's not real are really, really good because, you know, I think uh, Dr. Hugh Len is a great example of if you completely <clears throat> forgive something and clear the data in your own consciousness mm. of what you perceive is going on in the world, that miracles can happen. So it was like uh, he, um, he was given the prison files of a whole pr prison of violent criminals and just by doing forgiveness work in his, on the data uh, dear Father, whatever uh, data or memories have manifested this violent criminal uh, who goes around running people over in his car, uh, I'm sorry, please forgive me, thank you, I love you. So then he was, just by doing that, and that criminal got well and had to be released from prison, and the whole prison got well and released. So the power of just doing the clearing work. Also realise that you only track information if it's interesting or meaningful. Once it's no longer interesting or meaningful to the ego, um, it doesn't stop a flow state happening. You know, like when you meet your friends and you're not under threat, you can have a, a timeless, flowing evening because there's nothing, your ego doesn't get scared, resentful, you're not under threat. It's because, so that, that timeless flow is an effortless experience with your friends. But actually that effortless, timeless flow can happen at work. The only reason it's not happening at work is because there's various fears or resentments or things about survival going on. If you clear all of those, transcend all of those, then actually 
the experience at work is effortless. You know, uh, so if you're not if you're not scared, if you transcend the fear of being fired, because usually that's about the worst thing they can do to you. I mean, you're fired, and if you transcend the fear of like you won't have any money or you might be homeless. If you can transcend that, then you might you can just enjoy work. You see, so what's the worst thing? If you mm -hmm. transcended the worst thing, then you just you just laugh, have a good laugh, and if you have acceptance, usually when you transcend the last fear then you realise probably the worst won't happen, you just get another job, you see. Yes. But if you haven't transcended the fear, like when I thought, when I was in the stock market, I hadn't done the spiritual work, I thought if I get fired, I'll never get another job, and then I'll die. Because mm -hmm. I hadn't done the spiritual work. But when you do the spiritual work, you realise, and you go to a higher vibration, you realise, oh, if I get sacked, I'll have to get another job, that's not a big deal. But if you haven't done the work, then it's like, it's, it's like you're, you're afraid every day of losing your job. Or you're afraid every day of, of the boss sort of saying something. And then when you go to these higher vibrations, it's like your light lifts the whole company. You usually get promoted. Mm. Or if the company's integrous, probably if the company's totally dishonest, you might make, move. Yeah. move company yeah, because yeah. they'll dispose of you yeah, or, or, they, or, they, you, yeah. or they dispose of me you know like yeah. uh, I won't name any companies but um, yeah I was in certain companies uh, and um, yeah the culture was dis shall we say dis really reasonably dishonest so mm. honest people didn't really particularly have a, a role mm. in that yeah. but I won't on camera I won't probably talk too yeah. much about that tell us after so. <laughs> tell you can tell you after yeah, <laughs> yeah. so you know, certain companies have a certain vibration, the management have that vibration, mm -hmm. so there, there's no point in trying to be uh, spiritual because you're not going to win, really. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> but usually when you go to high vibration, you'll be attracted to a company um, that has that vibration. Or, if it is an integrous company, usually you'll get promoted because you're, you know, uh, you'll find that people will listen to you, you'll, you'll be empathic, the boss will like you being, being around you and stuff like that. So you just get, you just have that power which is literally supporting the whole company. Uh, like, like they sort of say, you know, like in TM meditation, they did that research and Hawkins also did like one enlightened teacher counterbalances the negativity of millions of people below 200. Or in TM meditation, like I think it was about 4,000 people meditating in Boston. Um, as an experiment, and the violent crime rate went down 43%. So, just imagine someone going up in consciousness in a work environment. Mm. You know, literally, that company will start to prosper, people will have less arguments, they will focus more on their work, mm -hmm. um, and uh, people will like being around you. So, literally, you, you are worth your, your, your weight in gold if, mm -hmm. you, if, you, if you put that light into. Also, you have to clear all the things because all the negative people will come to you, so you have to clear all their rubbish. So you'll be doing a lot of a lot of good work for the company. Okay. <clears throat> on on or off camera? Um, it's up to you, really. But oh, perhaps, okay. Yeah, because yeah, I, I think the response I'd love to hear a similar thing. Basically, okay. but, um, that was really inspiring to hear. And yes. you spoke to me for now. I'd love to hear if you've got a similar similar words on personal life because that really resonates with me in a work setting and sort of mirrors and supports what I feel is going on for me at work right now, but I, I need a lot more support, actually. I struggle a lot more with personal life, actually. Um, so it'd be great to hear if you want anything similar. Yes, yeah, I have, I have something similar. I mean, usually when I think of personal life, there's romantic relationships, there's friendship relationships, and there's family relationships. There's mm -hmm. a, you know, I like, um, my mother recently died, but I lived, I, you know, I lived with my mother, my parents my whole life. And I did the, tr I did the, my intention with my mother was to transcend her. To transcend my mother so that there's nothing she could do or say that can trigger any button in me. Mm. And uh, also to practice unconditional love and to have no outcomes or expectations of my mother whatsoever. Zilch. Zilch. So that's like, <clears throat> you know, to, to fully transcend another human being so that they, can, they cannot affect you or press any button in you. Mm. And that, I think that took about five years of work because every time she, the button was pushed, you'd have to transcend it. 
I'll go into how you do that. And then after and then the last several years, you know, I had the most wonderful relationship, you know, just love, uh, love, harmony, watching films, you know, having, having great chats. Because, you know, once you transcend, uh, what I found, once you transcend everything, that, then the relationship is, is miraculously transformed, is what, is what I found. I didn't know that in the beginning. I, I just thought, in the beginning, I, was, I thought that if I transcended everything with a person, then they would carry on behaving the way they would behave, but it would have no effect. Because I knew I had the, I knew I had the capacity not to be affected, so I knew that was possible. I didn't know it would actually have a miraculous effect. So it did actually have. So <clears throat> the way you transcend a relationship is have the intention that there's nothing they can do or say that can affect you. <clears throat> uh, also surrender wanting any outcomes or payoffs or expectations with that person whatsoever. <clears throat> okay. Then. Um, <clears throat> So, uh, also, I mean, another thing I did, I did, I did multiple spirituals. I used the observer, I used field of feelings, I used course of the miracles, um, and I wanted to transcend. I also used the principle of unconditional love. Um, I also used the principle of um, not getting into arguments or picking up arguments with my mother. So I used quite a few different principles. But um, here's the thing with, um, with uh, field of feelings and the observer. So every time I'd be with her, she might say something that would trigger me. So these emotions and thoughts would come up. Mm -hmm. So I found out there was different triggers. There was triggers of the type of words she would use, certain things, like certain things she would make comments on my life. Mm -hmm. So those I found would trigger me. There was her vocal tone, yeah. the t intonation of the voice mm -hmm. would trigger me. <clears throat> Facial expressions could, could, could trigger me. Um, <clears throat> Also, I had a lot of... Um, so I knew that I needed to transcend all of that. So there's nothing she can say. I also found out that even as you were doing the transcending the work, she knew there were things like political things, like on the news, which I disagreed with her when she'd have certain views on political stances. Mm -hmm. And so I'd sometimes go in <clears throat> and I'd sit down and then the news would be on. She'd have the news on and then she would start commenting on the things that she knew I disagreed with yeah. <laughs> you know, just to see if I would respond so I'd have to keep my, I would have to keep my mouth shut basically yeah. and <clears throat> I found you know so that was one thing also I'd go practice the observer mm. so she'd hook I'd go to the observer she'd say something or make a facial expression but but I knew that I wanted no no facial expression to have no, it doesn't matter what fate, could be the observer, detached observer, not get hooked in. If she said something and a lot of emotions would come up, then I would actually leave the room and go in my room and sit with those emotions, <clears throat> whatever it came up, and feel them out. So, and then the next time I'd go in, and if she said it again, eventually the less feelings would come up. Mm -hmm. And then eventually no feelings would come up. It was like nothing. It was like a neutral thing. It had no effect. Often I found, after a while, she would like check, you know, and there'd be no response. She'd keep checking for a few months and then she'd drop it. That's what I found. So I found once you transcend and don't react and are not affected, they usually check for a few months mm -hmm. just to make sure. And then after a few months, if you still make no response, I found if you did at any time pick up, you'd go back, to, you'd go back quite a lot, mm -hmm. you know, because they found out you're still, you know, you can still be triggered. <clears throat> so I knew I had to feel all the feelings out and <clears throat> my own thing with her was if she would, uh, and I could also chart my progress with her because she would like it when I'd make her a cup of tea, you know, she would like that. So I knew she liked that. So my thing was, <clears throat> and I, I had a track, it was quite fun. So she would do something that would trigger me and then I'd be disconnected. And then I'd have to go to my room, process it, yeah. and then go back and say, Mum, would you like a cup of tea? Like she hadn't said anything, mm -hmm. you see. So after a while, and then after a while, she'd be able to say it, and I'd be able to offer her a cup of tea straight away. Yeah. She'd just go like, blah, blah, blah about that politician, and say, Mum, would you like a cup of tea? <laughs> so that meant I transcended it. Whereas before, she would say that, and then I'd have the reaction, and then I'd have to go to my room, and then transcend it. So eventually, so th those, those eventually stopped. So feeling the feelings. Also, when I'd go in, I'd practice being in the observer. <clears throat> So you go in the room, you're in the observer before you go into the room. 
and you sit sit on the chair just being the observer you're not in the ego you're in the observer position and then she can go and talk and whatever mm -hmm. or and then you just stay in the observer and if you get hooked down with the observer you try and go back to the observer or if you can't go back to the observer you may have to leave the room and feel the feelings so you transcend everything and then <clears throat> After a while, there's nothing she can do or say that hooks you. Because anything that hooks you, you're willing to go, you're willing to be 100% immune to that. And eventually you are. So you, eventually you transcend hooks. Uh, and then you no longer, and then you, you transcend them for a while, you're tested for a while. And then they never check you. It's like it's fully released from the, and then you might have a new thing. <clears throat> so you transcend that. So after a few years, you've like washed out every single hook. And then what I found was it was a beautiful, loving relationship. Now, <clears throat> if it's like, like I, I haven't, you know, I'm not in a romantic relationship, but I would do the same thing if I was in a romantic relationship. <clears throat> because the, um, the reason why I'd get angry or fearful or triggered is because they're saying something I don't like. They're not behaving the way I want them to behave. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> I mean, I can let them go, but if my intuition was to transcend them, mm -hmm. I mean, the intuition might come and let them go, but if the intuition was to stay with a romantic person, I would work on transcendence. Yeah. So, <clears throat> okay, so, okay, they said that, I didn't like that, so I'm going to transcend it, so that even if they say that again, it won't affect me, I'll mm -hmm. just stay in the observer, or stay in the, the witnessing state or the present state without getting my ego getting hooked out. Mm -hmm. Or they may press a button which brings up a lot of feelings. <coughs> yeah. Like, <coughs> if you don't clean up your room, I'm going to leave you, you know. That might bring up feelings. Oh, I'm going to abandon yes. it or something. <coughs> so I'll have to keep sitting with that feeling of abandonment every time they threaten abandonment. And then eventually they'll say, oh, if you do that again, I'll, I'll, I'll let you go and never see you again. And it'll be nothing. You see, so it's okay, fine, you know, it's a bit, no big deal, see. Mm. So you felt out the abandonment part, yes. or, <clears throat> or the judgment part, so you feel that, and then eventually you're with, with them, <clears throat> and you're just, in, you're just in that present state, you're happy and you're enjoying their company, but it's not them you're enjoying, you're enjoying the, the present, the whole presence. So it doesn't really, when you're connected to the presence, when you're connected to the, to the eternal now, or you're, you're in the infinite now, every moment is enjoyable because you're not hooking in, mm. you see. When you don't hook in, everything is enjoyable. It's only when you hook in, when the ego hooks in, time happens, mm. resentment happens, fear happens, mm. uh, tracking happens, something, that ha something occurred which wasn't nice to the ego. But if you're in, that, in the observer or the presence and you don't hook in, then really nothing has disturbed the presence. Does that make sense? Yes. There's an effortless flow. Mm -hmm. You know, there can be an, even an effortless flow, even if they suddenly come up and say, I'm leaving you, I found someone else. If you've, if you've transcended that hook and that abandonment part, then it's fine. It doesn't stop the presence, you see. That the intrinsic presence is that which mm -hmm. is life. It's only when the ego hooks into something that something seems to happen which creates resistance mm -hmm. and and unhappiness yes. for the ego. Otherwise nothing is happening that stops the flow. Mm. Nothing ever happens in the world that stops timeless flow and presence. So you can do that with any relationship. Um, so whether it's a, a family relationship, whether it's a romantic relationship, whether it's a work relationship. Sometimes when you do transcendence work on an individual, it will come intu intuitively that you should let the relationship go. Which is fine, you know, it served its purpose. You don't, like, I don't think you should, if the intuition is not to do full transcendence but let the person go, you should let the person go because <clears throat> it's not to think. So, so that's the thing. Another thing to know with relationships, if you want to fully transcend a relationship, one of the key things um, is to understand whether, when, in, when it, an ego is getting payoff out of a relationship, a lot of relationships happen and there's a lot of fear in the ego because the ego wants payoff from another person. Either wants financial payoff, it wants like affirmation payoff, yes. um, <clears throat> approval payoff, survival payoff, um, 
or like you know community like what will the will all the friends and family think if I don't hold on to this so all of these things you know so your ego um, wants these things and gets afraid of letting go of its vested payoffs <clears throat> So if you want to transcend someone and be in the flow state and be happy, joyous and free all the time with them, you need to, <coughs> uh, if you wanted to be happy, joyous and free all the time, you'd have to surrender 100% of all the payoffs. But you don't have to surrender 100%. If you just want to be like, surrender some of your payoff, you'll be mostly happy, joyous and free around them. Mm -hmm. You know, like, here's a, here's a common payoff, like, oh, that person gives me compliments. Or maybe it could be that person pays the bills. Mm -hmm. doesn't, doesn't matter. So, <clears throat> so the ego is now now has a vested payoff. Mm -hmm. You see. So, um, but really, if you trans, you can still keep them, but you want to surrender the payoff. You see. What would that mean? It would mean like if they say, "Oh, you're so wonderful. I think you're the most amazing person in the world," and you hear that every day. Mm -hmm. You see, and then you feel like really, really good. Oh, I feel so good. I was feeling bad, but now I heard that. I feel so. You become addicted. Yes. You're addicted to that compliment every day. So you wait every day. It's like you now you're like you're like a dog waiting for the compliment. You mm -hmm. see. Oh, they didn't say the compliment. I feel down now. You know. <clears throat> so so you, it becomes like an addictive loop, and there's like a vested interest in that. So you've got to be willing to surrender that. You know. To still be like you, you practice. You're happy, joyous. You want to be happy, joyous, and free before you see them, and you don't want your ego to hook into the compliment and get puffed up. Yeah. You know, you want to stay neutral <coughs> and happy, mm -hmm. and still be happy afterwards. And then uh, you see, because when you're in presence, you're always happy. But when your ego, when your ego makes it about the other person, you're in a victim mm -hmm. positionality. Suddenly, you're now dependent on the, you know. It, there's a perception of dependency on the other person for, for, for love or security or survival. So <clears throat> now, there, now the, the ego becomes activated and dependent on the person, mm -hmm. you see. So in order to make, transcend that and remain in the flow state and be grounded in the eternal self, you have to be willing... So for me it's like my allegiance is to be present to be in the, in the observer, or to be in the presence. Mm -hmm. and, and then every moment is happy and free, and every moment is alive and loving. Mm -hmm. And I enjoy, because there's wonderful people here, but if my ego makes it about, I'm happy because this person is here now, mm -hmm. and they gave me a compliment, mm -hmm. then this becomes like a, a dependency. <clears throat> yes. So as soon as there's a dependency done, as soon as the person leaves, I'm like, unhappy, mm -hmm. you see, so this, this ego inflation now builds up, you see, it's happy now, got the compliment, unhappy, but no compliment. Mm -hmm. Person is here, now happy, person mm -hmm. not here, unhappy. Mm -hmm. So this dualistic uh, entanglement with the world starts yes. to happen. So the flow state, you know, the presence, and that happy, joyous, free all along, all through the day, or the timeless now, is not consistent. You can see through the day. So, the thing to realize is that if one transcends a person, then one's going to be happy all the time and with the person. And you can keep the person or not keep the person, doesn't matter. But that, that presence is the happiness. <clears throat> yes. You see, so you, you've locked, but you have to be willing. The ego doesn't like to give payoff. Mm -hmm. You know, the ego may go, oh my God, that person won't pay the bills or oh my God, I won't get the compliments, or oh my God, what will the family and everyone think if I let that person go? So all of these things, all these payoffs, you have to disentangle. <clears throat> so that's how I, how I transcend. And actually for me, um, <clears throat> here's the thing with addiction, or dependency, or being addicted to people, mm. is um, it leads to a lower level of consciousness. Uh, it leads to a low level of consciousness. So really, like the Course in Miracles says, it's like, um, what is it? God is the source of my security. It says something like that, you know. So when you when you like go into a victim positionality of like dependency on other people, your vibration drops, mm -hmm. and uh, <clears throat> and if you become really really addicted, your vibration goes really really low. Mm -hmm. 
because now out of fear and dependency you're really hooked in. So that leads to a lot more of an unmanageable difficult life, health difficulties may occur, financial difficulties may occur, arguments may occur, all that stuff occurs because you're now in a lot of ego interaction and dependency with the relationship. Whereas when, you're, when you surrender all of that, you're in, you're in alignment with the flow of the universe and the universe mm. provides everything. So it's actually better, but you know, it is actually work because the egos can be very enmeshed and very dependent. They can also be, not just to compliments, the ego can be addicted to negative drama mm -hmm. or fear or like, it's, it's familiar, you know, like if you're in a bad relationship, it's just familiar. Oh, he's horrible to me all the time or she's horrible to me all the time, but that's the best I can do with and uh, I never get anyone else and I should stay in this relationship and I'd rather stay even though it's bad all the time. Mm. So there can be like, it's actually like an, addi an addiction to the negativity or the yes. drama, you see. So not just addiction to the, to the compliments can be an addiction to, to bad things as well. You know, there can be karmic patterns like, you know, I deserve a bad relationship. I deserve someone who puts me down. There can be these, these things where the karma is attracted to those you know, habitual relationships. So for me, again, to transcend that and to let those go, transcend the patterns within me so that they have no meaning. Mm -hmm. And you'll know when you've transcended something because you'll, it'll have no effect. You'll maintain yes. a positive state throughout the whole thing. Like, like I shared with my mother, like she would say something and I'd go into a reaction. Mm -hmm. So that means I haven't transcended the problems in me. It's not my mother. I haven't transcended what's in me. So it's, it's in a way it's nice to have that mm -hmm. because I can, I can see what, how much work progress I've made until it has no effect, you see. Mm -hmm. I think um, for anyone who's listening to this video, when you do transcendence work, if you're called to do transcendence work totally, uh, what will happen as your vibration goes up, Either intuitively your intuition will come to leave or your vibration will go up and the other person's vibration will go up and then the relationship will work mm -hmm. because you'll clear the stuff out of them, they'll go up and suddenly there'll be a holy relationship and it'll work or you'll go up, they won't go up and intuitively either you'll leave or they'll leave magically. Mm -hmm. You know, they'll suddenly say, oh, I've got a free ticket to the Bahamas and all expenses paid for the rest of my life, so sorry I'm leaving you, goodbye. And then they're gone, you see. So that can, that can happen. Or I know people who've been at work and they do the, the thing, the transcendence work, and suddenly the person who's giving them difficulty suddenly leaves the company. Mm -hmm. So that kind of thing happens as well, you see. It's like, probably they're not going to go up, so the universe pulls them out to the picture and they leave. So that, that kind of thing is very common. So that's, there's that, that sort of, Answering everything on how to transcend. Mm. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, that's really helpful. Yeah, it's, it's still a severe, severe pain. I mean, I'm just trying to get some purchase on it and trying to um, bring up some topics, some various topics, to see if it, what it might be about. I can't. I can't. It's really constant. It's really intense. So I thought, uh, yeah, it doesn't come up when I'm at work, and it comes up more when I'm in my personal life, so I thought that there might be some great stuff um, to address it with, you know, in, in terms of that topic, but, and it really is illuminating, but it's still, it's just savage, it's savage, it's really savage, it's constant, um, the quality of it is, oh, really, I can't describe it, it's like, I don't know what to do about it really. Is the pain here now? Yeah. Uh, where is it located? Sort of there, above on my left. Okay. So yeah. if there's... So it's here, yeah? Mm -hmm. Like a canister? Yeah, sort of, yeah. Like a Coca-Cola can or something? Yeah, okay, sort cool. of bigger than that, but oh, yeah. okay. All right, big, big, mm -hmm. bigger than that. Big Coca-Cola. <clears throat> Maybe like a drink bottle or something. Yeah, well, it's kind of coming from all about... It's like this, it's more like this. It's very it's interesting. Like, it's like... It's like... Um, like, a, like, a, like an instrument was like lodged in here or something. Yeah, it, it feels like I'm standing, it's, it's more like I'm standing under a, um, not quite a waterfall because it's still kind of uh, 
Never take the next. It's not.